Broadcasting to you from a little grass shack in the middle of the Pacific. Live in the place to be. <laughs> well, they're actually in the Bay Area. Yes! Yeah, but they are. they are the premier Pacifica show that shines a spotlight on positive Pacific Island. You listening to the sound of real models coming brown every Thursday night at 6. East to West, we getting hurt. Yeah. Brought to you by Pacifica by Design. It's the iconic FICA podcast with your hosts. Naki and Carl. Parole models coming brown. Naki said that. What's up, Naki? What's up with you? It's uh, showtime. Showtime. Season 7, episode 40 of our show, the FICA yep. podcast. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the Pacifica Excellence Mural review, or Reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, we Naki's going to talk to us about Pacifica and Focus. Yeah. And in the back half, we have an interview with uh, Nina and Tupe. And we're going to talk about what they're doing um, a little bit before they come on. But then they are going to talk about all the amazing things they're doing. We just landed this uh interview today i believe right right, right. <clears throat> we just got all naki's working out. her magic to get guests on the show right. so that's our show today naki what's up yeah oh you know we so i'll have you check in and first i had lots of pictures all right and stuff so like that. um let's see um so the over the last week really mm-hmm. the last two weeks it's been all about my mom's health um and we finally got her settled in. It's been a real emotional ride the last 14 days. Um, and yeah, we finally got her in facility. Yay. She was really in those, those days with in ICU. Um, <clears throat> she was, you know, she actually said, I'm not sure that I want to live. Um, and I, I'm glad that her mind's there for her to mm-hmm. make those kind of decisions because yeah. sometimes when our loved ones say that, um, you know, <clears throat> we're not sure that their mind is right, right? So, um, you know, having her tell us that, it was heartfelt. I think she, she was just tired, and she'd been sick for a long time, mm-hmm. you know, and she knew she was sick. So um, getting through ICU and then getting into her hospital room, at her point she was in the hospital room, she was saying, I think I'm, I think I'm good. <clears throat> but now she's better. Uh, she's feeling better, and hey. she wasn't eating. Yeah, mm. so it was... For several days, people, my family's like, yeah, no, I think she's doing better. And I'm like, unless she's going to eat and drink, it's going to be a, a short recovery trip. So mm-hmm. I was really concerned about that in the, in the last probably 48 hours. Yeah. She's um, she's renowned for her appetite. Like there's a Yay. lot of times we go out to eat and I'd order, you know, most people don't finish their plate of food. My mom would finish the plate of food. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's never been for want of an appetite. And when she wasn't eating, I was just thinking, hey, that's not real, you know, it's not of her nature right. to not eat. So in the last um, two days, Tuesday evening, no, not Tuesday evening, Wednesday and Thursday, mm-hmm. uh, yesterday and today that have been the days that she's decided, hey, I want to do it. She's engaged in uh, physical therapy. Yay. And working hard i heard she was uh she was not we the doctor we had a really heart to heart talk with her on <clears throat> um wednesday morning um about what she wanted right and if she was going to live if she was not going to participate in physical therapy um she was going to be bedridden for the rest of her life and i think that just having those open and honest conversations um, kind of opened her eyes to what is the quality of life going to be. And mm-hmm. I think that at that point she made the decision that, Hey, am I going to check out? Cause I'm going to check out. I think I'm going to do it. I think she was just going to, mm-hmm. you know, either get on with living or get on with dying. And, you know, after that talk, the eating, she doesn't, she didn't like the taste of her food. Um, I don't know that she still likes the taste of her food, but mm-hmm. she understands if she's going to, she wants to live and yeah. she wants to, to heal and recover, she's going to have to eat. So she was saying, you know, it was fun. We were telling stories about the old days and, um, you know, talks about when she was a kid. And, um, she would joke with the crew, the, the hospital crew would come in and mm-hmm. are you ready for the, your occupational therapy dot, your physical therapy. And she would, you know, she was hard to understand, but what she was saying was literally, um, 
therapy sucks. <laughs> it was just hard to do. And so she was telling the doctor therapy sucks, uh, but she wasn't doing it. I think at this point she um, knows that, Hey, therapy sucks, but I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. Right? So it's really her decision. It's always been her decision. Um, I admire her for her ability at this advanced stages of Parkinson's to hold under her mind mm -hmm. as rare. Um, so to still have those conversations, um, a lot of laughing, a lot of crying, a lot oh. of deep thought in the last two weeks. So I came home to do some laundry and do a few things with my nine to five and PBD. I'm back in the studio today. Um, take a deep breath and then I'll be headed back there. Um, probably this weekend nice. and then be there next week to, you know, kind of make sure that she knows that she's not abandoned and, um, we love her and all those kind of things. She was tuned in live for the show last week. I don't nice. know that she's, she's there to this evening, mm -hmm. um, but she got to listen to a couple of our shows. She is my mother. She has comments like one of the shows. She felt like we talked too much about football. Um, <laughs> And which I like, right? She's uh -huh. just on, that's just my mom. She's just honest about she doesn't care about football. So mm -hmm. she probably doesn't want, and she said that I don't know anything about football. So, you know, I hope your next show you're not talking about football, but we're going to talk about football today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just that's been a, it's been a real intense two weeks. Yeah, I'm of, glad she's feeling better or getting better. Getting or... better. I think she's committed to. Um, just hearing that she took a shower, you know, she's up out of her bed, mm -hmm. um, sitting up, taking a shower, those kind of things. Um, that's, those are, that's encouraging to hear. Nice. I love it. I love that family came to see her from Tons out of, of state and Kentucky. around the corner and Kentucky. Her grand nephew came all the way from Kentucky. Oh, nice. Um, her sister came from Seattle and there's just a ton of people. There were just people in and out that the, the hospital was blown away with like we were taking over the entire break room cafeteria Yay. area um we went and took over an entire end of a restaurant at one point nice um, i posted it on a social media i don't know we had 15 16 people at the table mm -hmm. and it wasn't even everybody that was there but you know it makes me think and you and i always talk about this right it, it is it is wonderful when we rush to people's bedside mm -hmm. and when we think it might be goodbye right right but what about when we're living? Right. Right. So we need to rush to the bedside we when to, we're living. We need to rush to celebrate life. And then we talked about, you know, it's kind of JT's thing about the Amu um, barbecue is mm. why is it got to be a funeral that we get that together gathering? Why don't we gather while we're living? Right. Um, celebrate life while we're in it. And I think that's mm. why I was so worn out when I came home. I was 100% in the moment every bit of it when we were laughing i was letting loose and laughing as hard as i could when it was, when i was crying i was not holding anything back so i was you know really focused on not letting any minute go by where i wasn't present where i'm mm -hmm. like on the phone or i'm thinking about something else and so that's been exhausting my sister's still there i'm gonna go give her a break this weekend nice um, she'll get some time for herself but um it's exhausting when you're going through those real emotional, traumatic experiences mm -hmm. and you're making the effort to be in it and not, you know, oh, this is horrible. I don't want to think about this. I don't want to do it. I just let myself get all the way into it, climbed into it, wore those clothes, had those feelings, still do. Um, but, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to leave anything on the table where I'm like, I should have said this, or, you know, I'm in the moment right now and I should, I should advocate for my mom or I should talk to my mom and say, Hey, they're really doing the best thing for you. Like mm -hmm. being in the moment and, and really being focused on those things is exhausting. Right. And these are, these are been a rough two weeks because two weeks ago after the show, I took off after the show headed to Fort Bragg. And since then to yesterday, the night before last, yeah. we finally got her into the facility. She needs 24 hour care. Um, and we weren't sure where that was going to be. We didn't want to have her leave Fort Bragg, but it's limited facilities in Fort Bragg. That's where all of her, her friends are at we mm -hmm. her friends to be able to visit. So hearing that she may have to go somewhere else, um, really stressful. It's heartbreaking having those conversations. Um, and I said it on my social media, watching our loved ones grow old is the hardest thing that I've done in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I heard I had cancer. This is way harder than that. And when I, they told me it was stage four cancer. 
this is still harder mm -hmm. than navigating that. And with the triplets, 24 diapers and 24 bottles a day, this is way, this is harder. This is the hardest thing that, you know, obviously if you have a, if somebody, you know, dies in a car wreck and it's that sudden, obviously that's more, but in a normal life, watching your loved ones get old is, yeah. is, is, man, it's difficult. It's yeah. okay, but it's difficult. Yeah, especially when they're um, they're ill or can't take care of themselves. Like, right. That's even harder. So, yeah, like my parents, they're, you know, my mom is, she's, my mom is my mom. She, like, is a health nut. 75 this year? She's. No, 78. No, eight or 78 77 or 78. But she's like, she, she's all health she's like right. all go no all gas no she ain't wasting any yeah. minutes auntie's, so, the auntie's mm -hmm. living all of her life yeah so i'm not worried about her and pops is he's 95 he's 95 and he's still you know she's there taking care of him but um you know they're trying to do the best they can so staying healthy and and they have a lot of people around them so your I, you mom's know. healthier than i am yeah like, she's, she's healthier than more. i am she's yeah she she's exercises healthier than more um she's got like my mom's appetite like mm. your mom yeah my mom she, heard, she, can, she eat. can eat she can, she eat. can eat and yeah her metabolism is crazy right. and that's because yeah. she's healthy she's yeah. walking all the time she walks she all the time all of us yeah <laughs> she, yeah so and you know there's you know she live like our my our niece lives there my my nephew is close by and then leah and her family and memory and Jane, like there's so much family nearby that they're like on them so you know that she's never lonely she's just busy she's crazy busy so and she still works and so you know crazy lady so yeah i'm glad your mom is is doing better and that she's somewhere where um, people can take care of her or, or monitor her health not yeah. really monitor but well you know so and i think it's one of the things that was harder for me going through this and it has then it would then i would have thought because i've been through it with my father is mm -hmm. my dad live with us yeah right so on a day-to-day -day basis i was there as the yeah. decline went and, and the can decline, see it yeah yeah and you're there and then when it's 24-hour care we don't have the ability to mm -hmm. maintain that care then he went where he could get the help yeah into a facility there was a runway there was like a ramp for that right with my mom it's been like just immediate it's like a two-week process rather than yeah. a three-year process with my dad yeah so i'm glad she's doing okay yay my mom's all and my nico and my Sela. yes yes that's my mom <laughs> my is on live yes i did say my nephew which is nico um and Marcella, who my mom practically named but um, I'm glad your mom is doing okay. I have tons, like last Friday, I went to um, SCDC. Um, they had their Pacifica Excellence uh, mural reveal. And Tracy Williams, who led that project, um, did a freaking badass job. Like this, it's kind of dark, but that's a mural, is that uh, one of the murals. And then here- So that's- uh... What we're looking at is a wall, right? It's a that's wall. A, that's it's a, a like whole a wall. When you enter, right yeah, when you go into SCDC, it's 220 feet Long. of mural. So I just captured just a little bit, um, of course, Manu, uh, the Manu'a flag. And then, um, you know, Samoa, which is, it was beautifully done. And like over, I don't know, close to 300 hours of people volunteering their time and coming down to pick up a paintbrush and help Tracy. And a lot of it was SEDC staff, which was amazing. It was beautiful. They had the reveal. People got up to speak. Um, here's a, a one of uh, Patsy, the sky is blue executive director there at uh, SEDC. The sky is blue, and so Pacifica Excellence. This is the mural. I mean, the mural is so beautiful. So, um, and then here's our like Samoan Solutions was there. Um, you could see Shirley, um, who works with all, all my usos. Uh, Christine, all my usos, Patsy, who's in the back. Um, a lot of community people, uh, leaders were there. Simala, Nani Wilson was there. Uh, Melissa, Nana, 
Natanya Jones was there. This is Tracy, who is the artist and the lead, um, I guess, lead project. So that, person, yeah. that picture gives you an idea of all those previous slides. Those yeah. are all like eight feet high. Right, so right. When you saw the previous slides, that's a good example to give them an idea right. of the scope the size of the project. Yeah, so it was a great mural, 220 feet of Pasifika artists and, and creators that came to paint at SEDC. So if you have a chance to get to San Francisco, 2055 Sunnydale at Samoan Community Development Center, they have this huge mural um, that they revealed uh, last Friday. And so that was, uh, it was pretty badass. Here is um, Epi who is with Samoan Solutions. Um, she was there as well, um, supporting. Uh, the whole team did such a great job. And then this is, I just, I'm just showing just a little snippet of the mural, but it's, it's pretty amazing. And then here are some of the people that were there. These handsome guys were there, um, came to the mural uh, presentation. They had amazing food. Um, and you know, I'm always, I'm all about the food. So the, they had, um, what they called native American tacos kind of on, um, it, they, they said it was on Fijian bread and then meat, lettuce, tomatoes, and they made the bread, they fried the bread right there. So, um, it was Damn. fresh. Oh my gosh. It was so good. I, I should have took, I should have took a picture of it. And so then last night we went to, um, well, Pacifica in Focus is a program under PBD that um, T. Menamoli and um, PD Toilolo, who is with the Living Room uh, Media, they facilitate, they um, teach the class. Um, it's called Pacifica in Focus. And they teach um, students about photography and lighting and and video uh videography and our sponsors or our funders is um dcyf and um sedc and we're part of the collaborative per pacifica urban roots and so we really appreciate it that it was a five to six week program at treasure island uh, job corps with about 10 to 15 students and um they got a camera and got to present um their photos this again is our our sisters um from Samoan Solutions that came to support PDMENA um at Treasure Island and then this is some of the photos that they had on um uh, stands mm -hmm. um for, of the, what the kids took and that's PD on the right or however you're looking at it but just a couple of photos of the amazing work that the kids did. It looks a little dark, I, but when I posted it, it was nice and bright. But, you know, <laughs> I'm not a photographer, so I don't know. And, you need to take the class. Yes, and N Nina, who's a director who will be on in a little bit, she'll probably be like, girl, why did you even post that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then that's PD and Mena. They spoke, um, talked about the students and um, what a, a, a great um, opportunity it was for them. And the kids were so grateful. They came out to, they're like, thank you so much for bringing the program here. Um, just sharing their knowledge about photography and videography. And then, of course, Here's um, some more, some of the people that joined that came to support Mena, that's Supo and Henry, and again, Samoan Solutions. And then Butter and Spice was our food sponsors, and this is some of the food items that I they had. I just saw nothing but good comments man, there for them. Yeah, they had shrimp rolls that were so good. I just, they were so good. And then the kids um, got to eat as much as they could, and so it was a really great event. I'm looking forward to Cohort 2 which is going to happen at uh, PIYA, SCDC. We're going to have two cohorts there. And then um, wherever we're going to show up, I'm not really sure. But I was so proud of PDM Mena, um, the work that they're doing there in the community and sharing their knowledge of photography and videography with these kids that um, one Samoan girl got up um, and spoke about, I wasn't even interested in photography. Um, she said, I wasn't even interested, but I seen the name Pasifika and Focus. And she said, I, I better go since I'm Aww. the only Samoan girl in this school. <laughs> and she said she loved it. And the kids got to, who normally wouldn't hang out with each other, right. even spoke about, you know, 
people that I normally wouldn't hang out with and then people that I knew a little bit, I got to know a lot more and they it created a bond that they're, they're saying that will happen for a long time. I think those are, that was part of, uh, storytelling is part of our culture, right? Right. So definitely as PD and Mena get to share a piece of their culture about right. telling stories, photos tell stories, right. right? Those tell stories they have for a long time since photos have been around. That's really what you, you take a photo yeah. of. You take a yeah. photo of to remember the story and to have them be able to share that. And because it's their passion, it's their right? passion. It's just, it feels good to see, it'd be such a positive thing for so many people, right? right. The community, the students, the mm -hmm. students are going through it, the vendors, right? PD and Mena, like yes. there's, there's nothing bad about what's yeah. the only thing, only great things going on there. Yeah. So they, they did a really great job. And then, you know, uh, the mental health of it, them, the storytelling and, and mm -hmm. why they took the picture and how they took the picture. And so um, just providing, you know, expressing their emotions through photography um, that otherwise might not have remained unseen. So I was really proud of them. They did a great job. And so we're so excited that that. And then this is Petey and Mena. They are our Pasifika facilitators, teachers. Um, Mena, who originally went to um, City College of San Francisco, who um told me about Lemoana, who our guest that uh, uh, Tupe, who's coming on. We I actually met her there when Lemoana came to San Francisco, which was a really emotional um, um, play or dance troupe right. uh, that performed. Mena actually introduced me to, to uh, Tupe. So these guys are really, they did a really great job. And so hats off to Petey and Mena um, for facilitating and, well, and mm. yeah facilitating but thank you for sharing your passion right, right? a lot of people right. they love to do certain things right but they don't necessarily feel confident enough to share what yes they're doing, right so being able to love what you do do it and then share it and teach it right that's a special that's a special art yeah be and some kids have a couple of kids have never picked up a camera before um in their life and now they want to you know do this as a, a career, wow. as an art of, for uh, for the love of the camera. So that I mean, we were all crying last night, and just loving the 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 stories that the kids were talking about or telling the stories that the kids were telling. So it was just, it was really heartwarming and just, it really took our breath away. So um, that, that was Pasifika and focus as cohort one has is it's a wrap. That's as in the, the kids books. were saying it's That's a, wrap. a wrap looking on to cohort two. We have our, yes. uh, do you want to do our community? Yes, announcements we first? should do our community right, announcements let's... and then we'll bring our amazing guests in. All right. I will hop in first. Um, so our community announcements, obviously we are talking about upcoming events in the community that if you're in the Bay Area mostly, but yes. there are some outside of the Bay Area. So yes. for you uh, listeners that are outside of the Bay Area, especially other areas in California, you may see some events yes. in your neighborhood. <clears throat> um, and these are these are things that we love to uh, talk about with our with our team or with our uh, listeners and mm -hmm. viewers, because we go to a lot of them, like yes. a lot of Naki's check-ins just now were about events that she was at. I'm everywhere. I'm She's everywhere. everywhere. Naki is everywhere. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and hop into um, mm -hmm. our community events. Our first one is near and dear to our hearts here at uh, Pacifica by Design. Samoan Solutions annual turkey trot is close. It is what? Uh, it's eight days away. It's it's next Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's not this Saturday, but it's next Saturday at the Brisbane Marina in Brisbane, California. $10 for youths, $15 for teams, and $20 for adults and fun. It's free for everyone who participates. Delicious food and drink will be provided by PBD. We're going to do that for our second year. Now we know what we're doing. You're going to have great food there. You had great food there last year, too. But will be the same price as the fun. The food is free. There will be Pacifica vendors, community resources, and fitness activities. This is a feel-good holiday community event. Come out, come out and trot come out and run or walk just come on out yeah and then picp brings the private screening of taika waititi's latest production next goal wins with a meet and greet with the star behind it all 
Jaya Le Sailua, happening Saturday, November 25th at 6 p.m. Get your tickets by scanning the barcode on the flyer. But the premiere actually happens November 17th. And then the uh, meet and greet is happening November 25th. And um, so go get your tickets. Yeah, well, go, that's go, the go. 17th or the 25th. Yeah, that is a must-see show. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. see it one mm-hmm. way or the mm-hmm. other. All My Usos Ray of Light is happening this holiday season. If you are a widow or know someone who could benefit from their support, then we encourage you to apply. Their holiday program aims to provide essential items, treats, and gifts to bring a little cheer and warmth to those who need it most. Click the link in their bio for more information. Yay. Modesto Community Bash is hosted by Central Valley Pacific Islander Alliance. It will, be, it will be held at Via Dolores Congregational Christian Church on Saturday, November 11th. That's this Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. All who attend will receive resource bags. I love bags. And 50 families will be receiving a grocery dinner package to go home. Food will be catered by Toke Moana. Yay! Resource bag, grocery bag, swag bag. Nacky's all about the bags. Toke Moana, ha- they make <clears throat> um, bangi popo pancakes. pancakes. My favorite. And crack o tai. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Save the date. The Holiday Nisian Marketplace will be held on December 9th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Le Maota. 833 Mailer Road in Burlingame. Shop Pacifica merch vendors and Pacifica food vendors and keep your dollar brown. Check flyer for point of contact information and we will see you there. PBD will be there. We will be there. Pacific <clears throat> Islands Together annual Christmas giveaway is happening December 16th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Bayshore Elementary School for children newborn to 16 years. Register by December 1st by clicking the link in their bio or scan the QR code on the flyer. Raina Mayfua and Pitt always have Pacific amazing Islanders programs. together. Yes, always we have love amazing them. Programs. Every event they put on is is uh, grade A. Mm-hmm. All right, Fatasi Youth Services and All My Usos present Open Gym Night. Join them for an exciting and active evening of fun. This will run every Monday for the next six weeks, starting on November 13th. From 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Palanga, Palanga Gym, 500 Felton, San Francisco. All ages are welcome. Come and enjoy a variety of pickup games and recreational activities. It's the perfect opportunity to socialize, exercise, and make new friends. Sign up by clicking the link in their bio or the QR code on the flyer. Yay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So here we go. Amazing, amazing events happening. Please check our social media. Um all our social media outlets and get to an event nearby. Support your Pacifica entrepreneurs and community organizers. Shop Pacifica. There you go. Keep your dollar brown. Keep your dollar brown. Keep your dollar brown. All right. We're going to bring in our, our guests now and we're going to introduce them. And then I'm going to listen and listen and listen because I'm looking forward to this these interviews right here. Yes, awesome. So our first guest, um, we want to welcome Nina Nawalo Walo. I don't want to mess up her name. Um, Nina is an internationally acclaimed director with over 30 years of experience as the artistic director and co-founder of The Conch, a Wellington-based production company. Nina has showcased her powerful visual and magical work at over 50, Uh, 40 international festivals addressing Pacific themes through groundbreaking productions like Vula, Masi, Marama, and the Naked Samoans Do Magic. Um, Passionately committed to sharing untold stories and using drama for social change, Nina established the Solomon Islands National Women's Theater Company, Stages of Change, to address gender-based violence. Her acclaimed work, The White Guitar, tells the powerful story of the Luafutu family and has been hailed as a seminal moment in New Zealand theater history. Nina's debut feature document, A Boy Called Piano, the story of Fa'amoana John Luafutu has earned a recognition at 18, 18 international, okay, I'm getting all teary-eyed, 18 (laughs) international, I'm such a crybaby, 18 international festivals winning five awards, including the best feature documentary at the Montreal Independent Film Festival and the Human Rights Award at the 
Quetzalcoatl. I'm going to jack that up. There you go. International <laughs> Indigenous Film Festival. Nina's journey has included her receiving the Senior Pacific Artist Award in 2017 to being honored as an officer of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2018 and receiving the New Zealand Arts Lariat Award in 2021. Thank you, Nina, for joining us this evening. Oh, my goodness. Thank I you love so much. These. I love these because um, our guests usually, they don't like talking about themselves. No. Right? So we have these Let bios, and I'm like, I'm going to have to sit through and listen to them because <laughs> we love amazing. to recognize yes. our our people. So we'd also wel- like to welcome Tupe Lualua. Uh, Tupe is an artist and educator from Porirua, Aotearoa, now based in, I'm going to mess this up, Te Whanganui Atara, I think. Perfect. Well, Yay. Um, Tupe's roots lie in Siva Samoa and live performance from 2009 to 2019. She taught Samoan performing arts at Fitirea, New Zealand, creating works performed across Aotearoa, Europe, Asia, and North America. In 2013, Tupe founded Le Moana, produced internationally acclaimed works like Fatuna Toto, 1918, and Purple Onion. She has extensive performance history, including notable roles in Polyzygotic. The Factory in Situ Marama, The White Guitar, and A Boy Called Piano. As the movement and creative practice tutor at Toy Fakari, uh, New Zealand Dream School from 2020 to 2022, Tupe made a significant impact. She also established the Mayasina Festival in 2013, a platform for cutting edge theater by emerging artists. Beyond her artistic pursuits, Tupe manages productions for the Te, Te Kivanui Festival and supports Tupua Ting, Tingafua, an award-winning artist. Tupe's achievements include the Samoa Artist in Residence Award in 2019, the Contemporary Artist Award at the Creative New Zealand Arts Pacifica Awards in 2021, and the Fame Mid-Career Award in 2022. Join us as we explore Tupe's journey, blending art, education, and cultural celebration. Welcome, Tupe. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I love the, and I know that that you both are sitting there as Pacific Islanders mm. and Polynesians going, oh, my gosh, am I going to, are they going to really do? Yes, because people need to know all the amazing <laughs> things that you do. So I apologize for, you know, we always talk about that. We get these, we're like, awesome. The longer, the better, yes, because it tells more about it. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love the bio and all the accomplishments that you young ladies have accomplished. Um, I know that there, the, your, your documentary is going to premiere tomorrow live um, in L.A. Can you tell us a little bit about the documentary and, and why why you decided to to? No, well, Nissan Bulvinaka and Talof Lava, it's a real honor to be on your podcast. You know, it's so renowned, all of the um, work that you do. So, Vinakavakali for um, inviting us on this evening. Um, yeah, no, it's a, um, it's a wonderful, um, long relationship with the Lua Futuanga to um, arrive at the place of having a documentary. And... Um, the relationship started, you know, a long, long time ago when Matthias, who is the son, uh, was at drama school and he met my husband and he was they, he was his tutor. And, and then Matthias, you know, went off and didn't finish his um, studying and he left his father's book, Fatmoana's book, in my husband's pigeonhole. It was called A Boy Called Broke. And it was Fatmoana's book that he wrote while he was in prison in Auckland, um, and it was about coming from Samoa as a child and then, you know, falling into different things and got taken into state care and through that journey went into, you know, the gangs and and prison and then actually found his way out from working in the library and finding Albert Wendt's book, Sons for the Return Home, And he read the book and then he, you know, went on a whole journey of changing himself. And um, and so we've been very honoured to work with the family, which and Tupi Lua Lua to do with. The first thing was the white guitar play with Fatmoana and his two sons. And, of course, his other son is Scribe, our 
you know, our renowned hip hop artist. Yes. And it was a generational story. And in a way, it's a very hidden story because there's a lot of shame that comes around um, the hidden things in society, um, you know, to do with prison or to do with um, all of the incarceration. And Tupé played the, the grandmother role in the play and played the female role um, and then came through into A Boy Called Piano. And A Boy Called Piano was a play. And then with COVID... And we couldn't tour, we turned it into the documentary. So it's really our honour, the conch, to walk alongside um, the Lua Futuanga and to have their trust and for the courage of the man to tell his truth and release his truth in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose what's wonderful um, sharing the film is because it's many people's stories and that's why it's moving it's stories of Aboriginal, First Nation, you know, it's, it's a big Indigenous story. And so, in a way, you know, we're being educated by taking it to places and people going, oh, it's our story mm -hmm. too. So, you know, coming to LA, and, and I know there's a lot of Samoan uh, community in the same immigration coming to New Zealand in the 50s, you know, there's many shared... Um, themes and things that connect but of course Tupi can speak from a very Samoan um, context you know but thank you so much yeah oh, I hope that you. sort of um, you know gives you a feel for everything. definitely does definitely yeah Tupi you want to tell us a little about uh, a little bit about um, the character that you're playing and and how if, and how it's connecting to our, our community. Yes, absolutely. First of all, it's good to see you again. Thank you. I was like, she ain't going to remember me. <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, you know, um, the Bay Area and all of the people that we met there when we came through was really special for Lemoana and um, a lot of lifelong friends and family I met when we were here the first time around. So it's really good to reconnect um, and especially the absolute privilege of being a part of this work. So um, when we were in the Waikata, um, it was a combination of um, the different narratives that Scribe held, Malo held. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to call him Malo because that's his name. Everybody yeah. knows him as Scribe as well. But I think just to kind of, that's kind of the relationship we all have working together. So um, Malo and Matthias and Fa'amuana, their father, they had all written um, their own contributions to the what well, eventually became the theatre play called The Wake of Time. And I've been working with Nina since I was 19. Um, and so she's known me for many years. Only and, two um, years. That <laughs> you mean three years ago? Three years ago? <laughs> yeah, so um, Nina, Nina was like, she... So what had actually happened was she called me and says, look, um, come into the theatre. Um, can you please bring 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 a etonga, bring a siapo, bring a tuinga, you know, we'll just have a jam with some images. And because Nina makes a lot of um, kind of uh, poetic uh, imagery works, um, and she has these certain images that you see, and that's where a lot of the narratives come through mm -hmm. in her theatre work. And so I thought I was just going to... Um, just for, just as a test, not even a show, just to help her develop some ideas. But then, of course, I get there and the family's there. And then we're mm -hmm. sitting there with the script. And then, um, you know, as we're reading the script, um, just like what Nina said earlier, yes, it's Scribe. First of all, I'm sitting on the table like, oh, my goodness, there goes Scribe. So I'm just trying to be cool, hold the yeah. script. I don't know what's going on. Scribe who? <laughs> I, know, I know, right? And then... But as soon as we started reading the story, um, all of my own um, mm. experiences in my life with my father, my uncles, mm. all my male cousins and my brothers yeah. all came to the forefront. And then it was the first time we had read that script. And then by the end of it, we were all deeply moved. And mm. um, most of us were in tears. I know I was crying. Mm. And then when we went into the process of it, Nina starts talking to me about certain scenarios and certain situations in which I have to play them. So, for example, um, there is a scene where the 
grandmother or the mother goes into the prison to visit her son for the first time. And of course, I remember that. I was there with my nana when we went to go see my brother or had been with my nana when we went to go see our cousins when they were inside. So channeling all of that in this, the work was, um, I wouldn't say that it was, it wasn't too far away from me, but I just knew it was something that I held yeah. in my own um, memory of going through it with my own aina. So um, that was the white guitar. And then we moved into a boy a called piano and it was that same kind of presence. And I must say, as a Samoan actress, it is the absolute honour and privilege when someone asks you to play one of the women that you know. Mm-hmm. Or that you might have had a connection with. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a privilege. And I've also had the privilege of meeting the family and getting to know more about Lupepe, who's Fatmoana's mother. And also, um, yeah, Lossa, but I, and I Auntie. think, yeah, absolutely. But I think also, you know, Tupi plays, um, it's, you know, she, she it does play specific characters, but in the film, um, she plays the memory. It's like, a, you know, the memories of children or mm. how you tap into what's in the mind. And so she, in a way, she represents all Samoan women <laughs> and Samoan mothers. And I think one of the things with a lot of the children in state care, when they're taken, of course, they miss their mothers. And some of the things which you miss the most, you miss, the, you miss nature, you miss water. So I've done a lot of filming... Um, where I captured water and um, mm. and the trees and nature mm. and things like that that yeah. um, you want to keep reminding the audience about that their children a lot of children were taken so um, so yeah it's um, it's you know it's beautiful to have um, the the you know to be uh, representing sort of all women really in a Pacific context but you know, the Samoan woman. And, of course, that doesn't even start to talk about how she is such an incredible dancer and the Siva. And so those sorts of things we use in a, a different way as well. So, um, you know, we just love to get, we just love it for any Samoan people who are based in LA that think, you know, that could would love to come on Saturday because it's 1 o'clock at the Fine Arts. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So it's a real privilege to um, to travel around and, and, you know, I was just in London and then Samoan people that are based in London came, you know. Nice. So it's beautiful to share the story um, in different contexts, yeah. You know, listening to Tupe talk about, you know, the honour of playing that role, it just dawned on me, Does is there any more pressure as a... Um, as a storyteller, really, that's what, what you're doing when the, the film is when it's called a documentary or whether it's called a film, you know what I mean? Does that, is that, is there any different kind of pressure or um, weight that you carry when it's a documentary versus if it's just a, just a normal film. And that's completely uh, just a question that came to mind when Tupe was talking and was like, wow. So if it's, is, is there any difference to telling the story in a, in a film format versus a documentary format? Yeah, I think with the documentary, um, because it's very much about Fatmoana's journey and we were thinking, you know, because we, you know, we asked him to go back to the boy's home and to the ruins where he was incarcerated, where a lot of Māori and Pacific children were in these homes. And so, you know, one of the things is why would I ask a man to go back Mm. to his darkest moment? And in a way, you know, it is about taking control of your own trauma and going back into those places and um, and looking at it and releasing it yourself. And so, in a way, I wanted the aud- I wanted all of the men because there's a lot of men who have not escaped the system and are in prison and they were those kids. And Fatmoana is one of the great survivors that managed mm. to find his way out. And as he says in the documentary, you know, a lot of people become drug addicts. They become, you know, there's all these things of coping. And so um, so I tried to sort of make, when he goes back to the home, I'm kind of wanting them all to walk along with him and go on that journey and sort of walking into places that kind of took your mana. And he goes back and he goes, I was there and now I'm standing here. And um, 
So I suppose it's quite personalised, the documentary. And I think also Fatmoana, um, his son Matthias, and then Matthias's son Tane, who is Māori and Samoan, he hasn't been into the in the system, and he has broken that cycle. And it's mm-hmm. you know it's like hope or healing. And so we've been taking it into prisons, and um, and we, we whenever we go to a festival, we try and get it into the prison. So we took it into the Tahiti prisons when we went to Tahiti, mm-hmm. and we took it into um, into London. I took it into a youth detention and um, Wormwood Scrubs. And so it's um, it's a very common, it's that common thing of sometimes it's very in this, you know, the grandfather, the father, and it passes on. So mm-hmm. the documentary is, is kind of trying to offer healing. So it is more personal than a play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Tupi's, um, the way she has come into certain parts of it, I suppose, you know, like even you, how you drew from, the play, yes, and you we filmed things you could talk yes. about, that, you know, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's you know, when with that universal story, there's also something that Fatmoana says in the documentary about it being a way of healing that inner boy mm-hmm. that has been hurt throughout his lifestyle, throughout his life and his life's journey. And so, there's like a moment where I play the mother, and when she's holding the baby, and um, all of those nurturing things that you miss when you're putting being put into an institution. Um, but also in terms of it being called, called a documentary, there is that um, footage of the inquiry um, because oh, yes. there was a massive inquiry um, mm-hmm. led by the Royal Commission in New Zealand against these institutions and the way that a lot of our um, men were mistreated when they were in those homes in state care. Yeah. And um, that one was the oldest, wasn't it? Yeah. The first person. Yeah, yeah. So Fatmoana is the oldest um, Samoan that has been in state care, and that was able to share his story. So that went hand in hand with the documentary, and then going deeper into his own personal story. Wow. Is there? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, and that's quite a nice rhythm to come back to because it's in a court setting. It was held in Samoa House in Auckland. And they were allowed to uh, put it into a Pacific courtroom, in a sense, in the way it was, um, in the in the way the Royal Commission ran the inquiry, which is still ongoing. So we have these excerpts of moments from that, mm. which really helped us frame, you know, when you haven't made a documentary, yeah. oh, how do we make one, and how do we do it our way, and um, how we follow our own Pacific way, but how we also that helped us with a kind of structure, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's the through line of the film, you know. We go to all these different parts of his life and then the journey, and then we just keep coming back to this continuous narrative because it's factual. Yeah. It's it's what happened to not only Whamwana, but thousands of men in New Zealand. And were these homes just for Pacific Islanders and and Maori men? No, no, they were for all. And there were Pākehā children as well. Mm. But I think, um, I mean, as Whatmoana says himself, you know, this time in the late 50s and early 60s, it is part, a lot of the children that were in these places where there was a lot of um, different sorts of abuse. Um, and that's very hard to speak about for men when different things happen to them um, mm-hmm. and having the courage to speak about it. But there was a lot of the formation of the gangs and that is the truth of a lot of those bonds of children going through things and they bonded together. In fact, one speaks about that when he sort of goes back there and he sort of has different reflections where, um, of course, he knows that because he's lived in that world. But um, so it's um, so there is part of it that is um, different parts of New Zealand society that uh, may be a bit more hidden or that Mm. society doesn't want to talk about. And so um, it's very courageous. And and we we, we want, um, of course, you want all people in the Pacific to watch something. And so you have to think about how we present things back to our own community right. when we're talking about things that are very sensitive um, and taboo subjects, yeah. which is where Tupi's 
uh, presence as a mother or a grandmother or the that of the culture, um, I think, has healing and it softens things. And we have the most wonderful Mark Vanilau, who is the most wonderful pianist, who is our composer. And he, uh, Dave Dobbin, who's one of our great iconic um, artists, he's been his pianist for years. And Mark is a beautiful um, singer and composer and pianist in his own right. Makes his he own, grew up you know, in the church. Yeah, so came, yeah his, his parents were in the church, in Christchurch, and um, Baptist, I think. And so he's a very soulful singer. Oh, so, very. And the piano is, is, the, um, is like the figure of the mother. The, the keys and the sound and the softening thing. So um, it's a real privilege to um, to feel it working. You know that people are open to it because you never know, do you? Right. You know, and then, but of course, it's the man himself, the courage of a man to, because uh, he's seventy two now. Oh wow! And, um, that courage and and you know, yeah. um, continuing to want to uh, contribute to social change and to help, I suppose, with all the things he went through, you know. Mm. And in, in, in sharing his own story, you know, he has released, um, you know, a lot of our brothers, the, the shame. Yes. You know, the shame that they felt um, having had those experiences but not being able to talk to anybody, but just really being weighed down by all of this guilt and the shame. And then this film, as what Fatmoana has done so graciously, it just opens a window. You yeah, know, it lets them know that they're not... Families ...to let the sun come in, you know? I because, love you know, I think one of his greatest things is that you can change and, you know, it is possible. And so taking it into prisons and being able to... Um, just be he is he he is them they are him and all of those sorts of things um, you know you you hope this conversation is uh, happens with a lot of you know for them as men and it's very it's a privilege to um, be alongside it and you know we've been taking it into youth to youth justice um, detention centres mm. um, and you get a lot of the young you know young boys and all of that and so it's lovely for them to you know listen to him as a man who's lived all of it yeah and making them come on you can think in other ways and and, and just a contribution you know because there's a lot of people doing incredible work incredible work and i love that he's talking about it because um most trauma they hold on to it people hold on to it thinking that they're alone and that it's my fault that yes. this happens and so i love that he's speaking out loud yes. about the trauma that's happened to him so that these these people that are these men that are in prison and the young boys that are in prison are listening and you know probably a, a heavy load off of their their shoulder thinking that okay that i'm not the only one that this has happened to and probably start to heal start some healing yeah. and even for those that have never known anybody who's gone through it personally right. you know it's it's an education for them as well to understand how people get into these how people eventually become in these situations so it's a it's a good um connector for most people who have seen the film and made them think of it you know and yeah. have more compassion and empathy for uh, it, people that have been in it has it been natural to you um to both of you to tell stories that are going to evoke conversations um like just the way that you're talking, we're talking about this, right? It's, it's hopefully this has, it sparks conversation or it it pushes awareness. Are those types of stories natural to you? Like, is it, are those the ones that you're drawn to, to tell or to illustrate? Or is that like a conscious decision that these are the kind of, uh, the kind of works that you want to work on? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the older I've got, the more, um, I suppose we just want, you know, I think the older you get, you think, oh, what do I want to say, you know, because, you know, it takes a lot to make something and, you know, you know, when you're younger and you do, oh, we'll do this, I'll do this and all sorts of things inform what you're doing. But I think um, for myself personally, I tend to go a bit more political for sure. Um, uh, and, you know, I think when 
we went to the Solomon Islands and we worked for two years on this um, setting up a gender-based um, a, a national theatre for women. It was about gender-based violence. You know, it was not till I got there I thought, oh, my God, Nene, you actually have to do it now. And, oh, my gosh, you're not from the Solomons. Oh, no, you know, you had to, we had to put material up in front of the community about those themes. It's very delicate. You have to be very mm. careful, you know. Um, and so I think um, that was a big journey. But I think um, with the Luafutus, um, from doing the white guitar, um, you realise that it's um, very important. I think, of course, at different times I've thought, oh, can I handle this or is it too much? We, we have a huge team, you know, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of a team around us and very, very careful with who comes into the room and all of that sort of thing. And so, um, but I think um, it definitely from doing the white guitar, it's, um, I think the impact of the community feeling very, very, thankful that you are bringing hidden stories to the surface, which are many, many people's stories, um, is very encouraging. Yeah. And um, and in a way, yeah, it's, I suppose everything is sort of political now as Pacific people, isn't it? Everything we do, because we are um, just from, I think just the fact that we can tell our own stories and we can go, we can make a film, why can't we go here? Why can't we be? And that's the great thing of going into different indigenous platforms is this whole global thing of we we must, no one else is going to do it. You're not going to wait yeah. around to get hired because the phone isn't going to go. Yes. We've just got to make it happen. And I think um, that's political in itself. Um, so it's just wonderful to go into a film context and see where something can move to. So I've done a lot of theatre, and you you know you're with the cast, and it's it's really uh, transformative for for myself, yeah. But for yourself, to be yeah, um, you know. Well, so, I no yeah. no, it's fine. Um, I think um, as an actor, it's really um, I have the privilege of being quite selective of what um, I choose to put my face and my energy and my time to. But I think on a daily basis, if you're a Pacific Island person that runs a Pacific Island organization of Pacific narratives, you're political every single day. And um, I am in a position where I can help other young Pacific artists create their own work. Um, and then also it's okay for me to put something up purely because I'm into the artistic um, quality of it or I'm inquiring about how I can um, make a picture in a way that um, pushes myself creatively. Um, but, yeah, it's it's very rare that yeah. um, I'm involved in anything that isn't political. Um, I love it. Completely. I love it. How long did it take you to um, create the document? You know, the, the documentary was actually quite, thank you. It was actually quite swift because um it was COVID and mm. um and then we had to and we had money to tour and we had these investments and then they said, Oh, you know, do it in another way. And so we just sort of got on with it. And of course you always run out of money. Yeah. And then we applied and for, for and we cut a little trailer and we managed to get some more backing and multi televisions. Oh, we'll we'll take it. Um, but it was quite, um, you know, a year and a year and a bit. It was very direct and swift because it was a sort of COVID response, mm, and everything yeah. was locked down. And then we were into it, and so um, it was quite flowing, you know, and fluid, which is what we like. We just where where it flows, and then follow it. Um, so I wouldn't say we knew everything we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you know, go it's good to go into the unknown and some things we knew and some things we didn't know. So it was, it's, it's not like, you know, some where everything is planned completely. But yeah. That's the thing about great, when you've got a great group of people and you can plan certain things, but some things in the moment, do you know what I mean? I yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> no, it's, we're excited. I mean, I'm hopefully you guys will come to the Bay area. I'm excited for the people that are in LA that get this op great Lucky opportunity people. and you're going to have a question and answer um, after the film. Right. Yes, and, so, yes, yes. and how long will you be touring? Do you know? 
Um, well, following this, I'm actually going to Fiji where they've got a human rights film festival and then we will I will go there and that will sort of finish the year up. Um, and we actually heard about the San Francisco, the documentary festival, which we're absolutely going to put it into because oh, we no. would love to bring it to the Bay Area. Mm, um, yeah. And... Um, and then there are just we have been it's been moving around this year and it's got a few other places to go to it might take us up to next april or so nice. um yeah so it's just um it's a beautiful honor to um put it in front of an american audience in a way or an la audience you know? yes yeah. well we don't want to keep you too long because we appreciate the time we know how busy you two are <laughs> and we're just so humbled to have you both come on and give Very, us a little bit of your time. Yes. We we just appreciate it. A Boy Called Piano, the story of Fa Moana John Luafutu, is showing tomorrow at 1 p.m. in L.A. You'll get to meet the amazing award-winning director and yeah. the beautiful, beautiful award-winning director and the beautiful actress, Tupe. Uh, we are going to share all the information yeah. and then... Um, hopefully soon we'll get to catch it but um we will promote 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 scream it from the mountaintops yeah. it's, on so saturday. Saturday it's on saturday it's on saturday go. not tomorrow saturday. Saturday. I, I keep thinking today, so it's saturday next, next yeah. friday, i know today. saturday november 11th <laughs> the screening is at one o'clock um we will post all the information online and then um i know there's going to be there's a big audience there's a big mm. pacific islander community in la so um, we look forward to seeing pictures and everyone posting and and talking about the film too but nina thank you so much for joining us this evening evening god bless you god bless your june journey shout out That's to all the homies in the bay area yeah yes. we're, we're, we're not soon. jealous of southern california yeah, for we're, a lot, we're. but we're jealous. <laughs> <laughs> saturday we're jealous about yeah thank okay. you so much god bless thank you, you. Thank you. oh my goodness they're what um, an honor amazing what an honor to have them uh, bless the show by being yes. on so close to like it is go time it's it is go. the 11th hour for the the screening of that mm -hmm. show in los angeles check out our on social saturday media. on saturday september 11th november 11th. november i'm talking about i'm all i'm all jacked up i'm but just like starstruck yeah like how did we again yeah halfway through the show i'm like how do we end up i know and then here's me fangirling i'm like oh too bad i interviewed uh, her she's and then you know she's so polite we um, can now call them friends of the show yeah a boy called piano the story of Fa Moana john luafutu um documentary is airing in la la i'm jealous all right la you got us on that one yeah you got us on that one, but that's it. That's it. So, um, Rosalind Tufi, thank you for tuning in. We are going to, are we done? Are yeah. we done? We got stuff. We're so good. please everyone go check out the documentary in, uh, um, in a theater near you or in when, when they're out and then, um, we'll talk about it, um, next week. Cause I'm well, sure LA is going to be is, blowing uh, up. Thanksgiving. Is gonna, it next week? Next week is next week. Thanksgiving. No, no, no. The mm -hmm. week week after Thanksgiving. yeah i was like uh, already next week is i'm the already 16th. thinking about the turkey and the mashed potatoes and tater tots yeah no show <laughs> on thanksgiving but yeah yeah we'll be back next week we'll be back pacifica and focus thank you so much timena and pd toilolo and Susie at um job Corps. um big shout out to job Corps and the students there it was a great event i just wanted to we were crying all over the place and so proud so so proud um so um we are here every thursday at 6 p.m come back to fica with us love you all